So we have here a Dixie Narco soda machine. And this is this one was made in 1987. Um, now, I noticed last weekend that it was not getting cold any longer. So, guess what? Either the compressor's going or we got a Freon leak somewhere. And I, yes, I did say Freon because this bugger uses R12, which is no longer available. And technically, I'm not even really supposed to... But you can't really buy it other than extremely expensive, like on eBay. So, I went searching. What alternatives do I have? Well, there was an option, or two options. One, using something that really wasn't designed for ref uh, to be used as the refrigerant, uh, which was uh, using uh, uh, those duster cans that you get to like clean off your computer keyboard or electronics and stuff like that. That uses uh, um, what is called 152A and uh, is, a, is a refrigerant. It operates at a uh, lower pressure even and it can be a little more, uh, a little more energy efficient than uh, R12 or, or uh, even R134A, which do not put R134A in a system that was not designed for it. So don't go putting R134A to recharge a R12 machine. Another option is 12A. So I got myself a can of Frosty Cool. What is Frosty Cool? Well, in actuality, it is a mix of propane and isobutane. Yes, flammable, but if you think about it, uh, once even R12, which is considered non flammable, is mixed with the, uh, the, the oil in the compressor, if you had a high pressure leak spraying out, guess what? That is flammable with all that atomized oil. Same with R134A or R410A, all of them. Once you atomize the oil in with the, the refrigerant, it is then flammable. Well, this is a soda machine. Don't really have to worry too much about that. And considering that uh, this calls for 12.5 ounces of R12, there is not much in this thing. So, hooked up my gauge. For, oh, first, I had to find where the leak was. Well, at some point in the last 20, oh, 30, let's see, uh, this is 2019, so 32 years. Sometime in the last 32 years, somebody at some point serviced this machine and installed A service port because this does not have a service port um, you could have used a, uh, a line tap or someone soldered in brazed in a service port well ended up the service port valve was what was leaking and since because I just bought this machine a month ago um, I never checked to see if the little brass cap that went on the end of that service port was tightened either and has kind of like a double you know a double safety measurement uh, so, I replaced the, the uh, was it Schroeder or Schrader valve? I, I can never pronounce it right. Uh, and, guess, and vacuum tested the system. Everything held. Everything was perfect. Um, yes, I do have a vacuum pump. And then I proceeded to fill with 12A. And um, this thing is working absolutely phenomenal. It, we are holding now, it should be right around... 30 PSI without the uh, light blinding you. Looks like I'm at about 29 right now, and it's been holding a solid 29 for oh I don't know, geez, uh, almost an hour now. I got the door open because I'm I'm watching it, and uh, all the coils are cold down on the evaporator and the condenser. Everything's hot. Everything's exactly how it should be. I am very impressed, and uh, another nice thing is you use about half as much of 12A compared to R12. So this system called for, uh, what was it, 8.5 8 ounces of tw uh, R12. Well, when you use 12A, I only needed about... 
three ounces. It actually ended up being about three, I used about four, maybe slightly more than four. I put four ounces in. I used uh, uh, the kitchen, uh, the, the, the 12 ounce food scale from the kitchen, and uh, which is fairly accurate. I've used it for shipping um, and for the last, oh, 15 years, and it's, it's digital, very accurate, because uh, I compared it to the post office's scales. And uh, first I put in about four ounces, and then I ever so slightly, well, four ounces gave me about 20, 20 PSI on the low side while running. So then after running, now it should be about 30 while running uh, on the low side. And uh, so put in, uh, so I just slowly added tiny, tiny bits, which was about a half ounce more um, to bring it up to almost 30. And since it's been running for an hour, no problem. I think it's about time to, uh, to disconnect the gauges and everything. And uh, I'm gonna close off the can tap. And um, I'm also, oh, I'm also going to install a digital thermostat. Real cool because the thermostats, I, I've replaced the three, three different thermostats and they're just not not shutting off and turning on at the right time. I said, screw it, I'm going digital. It was 18, 18 lousy bucks. And uh, that's what I got for y'all. I, I hope you guys uh, learned a little something. I'm going to link you guys to Frosty Cool. And because it, it operates at a lower head pressure, uh, it actually runs more efficient. So instead of instead of drawing about 800 watts, I'm only drawing 523. And um, an empty system will draw less than a than a properly charged system. And then I, I was playing around doing a little power factor correction too. Uh, power factor was only about. 40 or 0.4 I brought it up to 95 or 0.90 95 percent or 0.95 with some capacitors just playing around and it also started so much smoother so that is it time to close it down good night everybody I'll link you to the frosty cool and uh, I'll link you to uh, uh, what else will I link you to oh yeah how about a uh, 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 a line tap, a side tap for uh, tapping into a system that doesn't have a service port. Uh, and let's see what else will I link you guys to. Oh, conversion chart, and I'll link you guys to a digital thermostat if you guys are interested. Talk to you later.